I'm Dan Stair of Daniel's Training Services, and I provide training and consulting services for the management of waste and also for the transportation of hazardous materials. Uh, in this video, I will be providing a summary of the steps you have to go through for the classification of a lithium cell or battery for transportation. Uh, now, first off, a disclaimer. Make sure you refer to my disclaimer video before you watch this, so take that into account. Um, there'll be a link to that here. Uh, also, this video is only a summary of an article that I wrote. I'll have a link to that in the, to the description. But even that article that this video is based on is itself only a summary of some very complex and very lengthy regulations. So there's different sets of regulations, international, domestic, involved in this. I'm just summarizing them briefly in this video. Refer to the article that I wrote. There's a link in the description. And of course, do your own research on the regulations. Okay, so this process that I'm going to go through here is your first step before you can begin in looking at the packaging and the hazard communication and everything else that's required for shipping a lithium battery. So there are some questions that you have to ask and answer before you can proceed, and they're all part of this classification. So, question number one, is it a battery or is it a cell? Now, a cell is a single encased electrochemical unit with one positive and one negative electrode. That's a cell. A battery is two or more cells electrochemically connected. A battery includes terms such as battery packs, or modules or battery assemblies. So you've got your single cell, two or more cells together, that's a battery, okay? Um, there is also a button cell battery, the tiny little discs that you see in equipment. Um, that is a round, small cell or battery, typically a cell, but it could be a battery, whose overall height is less than its diameter, okay? Um, now, this is our, one of our first steps, right, through deciding whether, determining whether we have a battery or a cell. Um, and even though this step is critical for compliance, and it's going to come up again later, throughout the regulations and throughout this video, I'm going to use the term battery to encompass both batteries and cells, okay? Okay, number two, what type of battery is it? So there are two main types of batteries. Uh, in the, the regulations. There's the lithium metal batteries. These are generally primary non-rechargeable batteries uh, that contain lithium metal or lithium compounds. Um, these are found often in watches and calculators and cameras and temperature, temperature data loggers and other uses like that. Um, it includes lithium metal, also includes lithium alloy batteries. So lithium metal batteries, typically single use, not rechargeable, used in smaller devices, that sort of thing. Lithium ion batteries is uh, typically secondary rechargeable type batteries. These don't contain metallic lithium, but they do still have lithium in them. Um, and these are the ones that are most commonly used in consumer goods. So your cell phone, your laptop, power tools nowadays are almost always going to be a lithium ion rechargeable battery. There is also uh, new in 2019 a classification for hybrid batteries, those that contain both lithium ion and lithium metal. Those have been identified in the international regulations. They have not yet been identified uh, as a defined uh, classification within the US DOT regulations, but they probably will. So instead of lithium ion and lithium metal, now we're gonna have lithium hybrid batteries. Next question, number three, third question to ask, what is its configuration? What is the configuration of your lithium battery? How is it being shipped? There are three configurations possible. Um, the first is the batteries packed by themselves or alone. So that would just be a single battery or perhaps multiple batteries, but they are not shipped with or in the equipment. They 
limit the power. That's the first configuration. Second configuration, batteries packed with, with the same package, but not in the equipment they're meant to power. So in one package, you've got your equipment, next to it, you've got your battery. That is the second configuration, batteries packed with, but not in the equipment. And then the third configuration is batteries contained in the equipment they are meant to power. So a lithium battery is shipped inside the equipment that it's there to power. Um, of the three configurations, the lithium metal batteries shipped alone are by far the most restrictive. Those are the most dangerous. Um, now, uh, so we've got our three configurations. If you have batteries that are packed as spares with equipment that already contains batteries, then they would follow the configuration as if they're packed all alone. So you have, let's say, a laptop. It has a battery in it that's contained in equipment. But let's say also shipped with it are one or two more spare batteries. Those spares would have to be shipped as if they're entirely alone. Okay, They'd have to follow that configuration. So that's our third question. How is it being shipped? What's its configuration? Fourth question, this is the big one. How much lithium is in the battery? Now, determining this uh, splits between the two different types of batteries we have. Lithium metal batteries are determined by their grams of lithium content. Lithium ion batteries are determined by their watt hour rating. You can see in this table, I'm going to be showing you a table here. In this table, you can see that there are different threshold amounts in the regulations um, that divide batteries into what's known as the smaller lithium batteries or the fully regulated or full-size lithium batteries. Now, the smaller lithium batteries are subject to a packaging exception. They get a break from the regulations. The regular or full-size batteries don't get a break from the regulations. And the very last row of the table that you see um, is an allowance only found in the US DOT regulations where your lithium thresholds can increase and you can still take advantage of the packaging exceptions, but that's only if it's going to go by highway or rail within the U.S. Okay, fifth question. What is the net weight of the lithium battery in the package? So, when you're considering the net weight of the lithium battery in the package, you're only looking at the weight of the lithium battery or batteries uh, that are in the package. You're not considering the weight of the equipment that they're in, and you don't just look at the weight of the lithium metal that's in the battery. You gotta look at the weight of the battery, that is your net weight, and that will play a role in how you can package and ship your lithium battery. Question number six that you need to ask is, how many lithium batteries are in the package, each individual package? Usually this is considered as a factor along with the lithium content in each battery, question number four we just did, and or also considered along with it, the net weight of the battery in the package, which was question number five, which we just addressed. So these things are starting to come together here where you've got all these different factors that are coming into one place. Um, and that all plays a role in how you can ship it and the packaging and the hazard communication and all of that. So question number six, how many lithium batteries do we have in each package? Question number seven, how many lithium batteries in the consignment? So you might have one battery in a package, but if you have 10 packages, well, that's gonna play a role in how you can ship it and even the hazard communication methods that you have to use in a lot of different things. So, question number seven, how many lithium batteries are in the consignment? And by consignment, that's your shipment, okay? A consignment is defined as a shipment of packages offered by one shipper to one carrier at one time going to one destination. That's a consignment, okay? Question number eight, what is the condition of the lithium battery? Uh, if you're
your battery is, is, is going to be used, you're shipping it as a product, then it's going to be subject to the standard regulations. However, if your lithium battery is damaged, defective, or part of a safety recall, that's what's known as a DDR, damage, defective, or recall, they, of course, will be subject to a much higher uh, set of regulations. And if your lithium batteries are being shipped for recycling or disposal, there is an exception for them, but they still are subject to a lot of the regulations. So the condition of your battery, that is a factor. Question number eight. We're getting towards the end, but we're still not done here. Question number nine. What is the mode of transport? How is it being transported? By air, by vessel, or by highway or rail? It should come as no surprise that without a doubt, the most stringent regulations are by air. Next, by vessel, and finally, by highway or rail. If you cannot ship something, there are situations where you can't ship lithium batteries by air, and you might have real problems shipping them by vessel. If that's the case, highway or rail by ground might be your only option. Related to number nine is question number 10. What are the applicable regulations? The mode of transport that you use will, will play a pretty deciding role in the applicable regulations. So, if your transport is going to go by air, you will most likely be subject to the dangerous goods regulations of the International Air Transport Association, IATA. Um, if, however, your transport is by air, and it's staying solely within the U.S., it's possible that you might be able to comply with the U.S. DOT regulations by air. But most air carriers use IATA, the international regs. And if you're going to ship international, if it's gonna, going to go outside of the U.S., then you have to follow IATA if it's going by air. By vessel, most likely you will be following the a dangerous goods code of the International Maritime Organization if it's going to be shipped by vessel out in the open waters. Okay. Um, now, the exception to that would be if the vessel never left the territorial waters of the U.S., then it is possible that by vessel you could comply with U.S. DOT's regulations. Not likely, but it is still possible. And Finally, the two remaining modes of transport, highway or rail, uh, those will be within the U.S. That will be subject to the regulations of the U.S. Department of Transportation. Okay, um, one more question, and it's related to question number 10. So this would be question number 11 we've got to here, is if your mode of transport is by air, and if you are complying with the International Air Transport Association dangerous goods regulations, then you also have to determine who your carrier is, the operator, and what nation your batteries are going to, the state. Because in the IATA dangerous goods regulations, both operators and states, and by states I mean a country, not a, not, a unite, not one of the United States, not Illinois or New York. We're talking a country like China or Germany or Brazil. Okay? Those states, those operators, are allowed to have their own variations to the IATA dangerous goods regulations that may be more strict. And, for example, both FedEx and UPS as air carriers do not allow you to use the smaller battery exception. So even if you have a smaller battery, referring back to that table earlier in the video, basically UPS and FedEx don't allow you to take advantage of it. You still have to ship it as a fully regulated battery, as if it were a larger battery. So shipping by air, subject to IATA, you got to check those state and operator variations as well. Okay. Those are the 11 questions I've come up with, and that's just the beginning. Realize you have to go through that just so you can begin the process of determining your packaging and your hazard communication and your shipping paper and whatever other restrictions and limitations might apply. So there's a lot involved in shipping lithium batteries. Don't get caught 
shipping a lithium battery incorrectly or undeclared. Make sure you comply with the regulations. Make sure you get all the correct information. Uh, contact me and also see that you have the proper training. Hi, I hope you liked that video. I hope you learned something about the transportation of hazardous materials. I've got a lot of other videos. I write blogs for my article. You can subscribe to my monthly newsletter. There's information about all of that in the description to this video. Thank you very much.